How's it going everybody? I hope y'all are having a good day. A little while back, I posted a shorts video showing y'all how I took this knife from looking like this to looking like this. Now, that's a pretty cool video and you should go check it out, but it's only 60 seconds long, so I could only fit so much whenever it comes to actually how to do it. So here's a video where I show the process in much more detail as I commentate over some of the more important aspects and really dive into the nitty gritty of what it takes to make a knife look even better than it did when it came from the factory. Let's get right into it. Here's the knife we'll be working on, and as with any reworking process, I start by identifying exactly what problems I'm working with. First of all, here's the blade, and at first glance it doesn't seem that bad, but if you look closer, you can see there's some corrosion happening over here, and there's a few deeper scratches that also have some corrosion going on in them, and while the edge is actually pretty good for a factory blade, it has a few little nicks and dings that need some work. Moving on to the handle, again, it seems fine at first glance, just a bit dirty, but if you look back here, there's a sizable dent that has led to some cracks forming. And if you look even closer, the handle is not flush with the spine of the blade, so it's a bit rough on the hands and just generally speaking, the overall shape of the handle is a bit hard edged and not very smooth or comfortable to grip. The sheath is also beginning to show its age as it's getting quite dehydrated with the little strap on the back having already dry rotted and broken off a few times. So overall, this knife is in much better shape than needing a full restoration, but I've definitely got my work cut out for me if I'm going to get it in good shape and looking sharp again. I'll start with the handle because if I start with the blade, I wouldn't want to get it all nice and polished and shiny only to accidentally scratch it up while trying to work on the handle. First things first, I need to stop this crack from spreading. So I'll use some liquid super glue that will soak deep into the crack and hold things together. Then I'll use some tape around the handle to make a makeshift mold. Mix up some strong epoxy and pour it into said mold letting it sit overnight so that it has plenty of time to settle in and harden. Once the epoxy is good to go, I'll use the belt sander to take off the excess. But then it's time to go a little bit more old school and start shaping things up. I use this shoe shine method where I grip the blade on the bench and use some sandpaper tape. It's not sticky, but it comes in long skinny rolls, so it's like, you know, tape. <laughs> anyway, I use the sandpaper to slowly work the handle into exactly whatever shape I want. I'm a little limited on this specific handle because I don't want to sand the head of the rivets off but I kind of had to make the sacrifice of this top rivet because there was just no way to contour the handle correctly. It was getting in the way. This is just one of those problems when it comes to working on a knife that wasn't very well built from the factory, but it is what it is. All I had to do was just peen over that top rivet a little bit to make sure that it's nice and squished inside of the handle and it won't be going anywhere, keeping everything intact. But with that done, it was back to shaping the handle and overall I was really happy with the fact that I was able to get a nice little contour going, smoothing over the edges a little bit and making it a lot more comfortable to grip. Once I have the shape the way I want it, it's just a matter of working my way up from 120 grit sandpaper all the way to 1000 grit sandpaper or higher. This process is known as raising the grain and it really brings out the natural pattern of the wood, getting it nice and ready to polish. But before polishing it, it's time to move over to the blade. The main concern here is the corrosion. It's already caused some pitting that's pretty obvious over here, but because the blade is so messy in general with all these scratches, it's hard to tell how many little spots we'll be dealing with. So we're going to go over to the rough buffing machine and use this 240 grit compound to make the whole surface of the blade consistent, removing all of the little scratches. Once that's done, I can see the specific areas that need more attention, focus in on them, smooth them out, and make the whole blade spot free. Now, given the rough compound we just used, we still have some polishing to do. 
If you leave the blade all rough like this, all the tiny grooves will collect moisture and really start to foster a lot of corrosion. So now we'll be moving over to the other buffing machine. With this one, we'll be using a wax-based compound that has a super fine grit in it. The purpose here is to remove all the scratching from the previous buffing compound and give the blade a nice smooth sheen. At this point, we're almost ready for the final polish, but first we gotta get this edge nice and sharp. At this point, the blade has already been mostly sharpened by the buffing and polishing processes. So all we really need to do for this step is apply some sharpening compound to the wheel and make more focused, controlled passes over the edge to really fine tune it and hone it to the razor sharp edge we're looking for. Now, obviously there is a lot more that goes into sharpening a knife, but I couldn't fit it all in this video, so I actually made a whole separate video about sharpening knives. If that's something that you need to know more about, go check it out. But for now, we're keeping it simple and just smoothly honing the edge until it's razor sharp and consistent. With that taken care of, we can move on to the final polishing process. I don't want to risk getting any deeper scratches from any of the previous buffing stages, so I'm going to be moving over to a fresh, clean buffing wheel and applying some of this special polishing compound to it. Giving the knife this final polished look takes time. You have to be very careful and go over the entire knife from handle to blade making sure that you're rubbing down any of those tiny little scratches from the previous compounds and giving it its nice, even, smooth finish. With the final polishing process taken care of, all we have to worry about now is the sheath. To be honest, there isn't really much to show here. I'm going to replace this dry rotted strap, so I remove it. I clean off the entire sheath with this microfiber towel just to keep any loose dirt and grime from interfering with the buffing process. Then I just put a little bit of dye on the sheath and buff it in with a clean smooth wheel which brings back some of the color that had kind of faded out. And last but not least, I use some of this leather restoring cream and just gently buff it into the sheath which will keep it from dry rotting any further and help the leather last a lot longer into the future. And with all that taken care of, that's about it. Let's see what it looks like. Overall, I would say I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out. It might not be the most extreme of restorations with the handle falling off and everything like that, but it definitely had some challenges in its own right between fixing the crack in the handle, removing the corrosion from the blade, sharpening up the edge, and of course restoring this sheath. Now, obviously, there's a certain aspect to this where I could never fit all the details into this short little video, so there are some things that I just brushed over, but let me know what y'all think about this format of videos, because I think it's really cool to just be able to explain what I'm doing as I go along, as compared to a more structured tutorial style video where it's like, do this, then this, then this, then this. Right? So if you have any questions about anything in the video, anything I might have left out, anything at all, just let me know in the comments below. If you like these videos, hit the like button. If you want to see more of them, hit the subscribe button. And go check out my Instagram page because I'm trying to be more active on that. Link in the description below. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you found it enjoyable and or entertaining. And until the next one, I hope y'all are having a fantastic day. Stay happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.